Um, but in truth, what was going through my mind is, I'm being attacked now by, by Martin McGuinness. L lots of people, there isn't a day that has gone by in the six months that at least a half a dozen people don't come up to me and say, do you know what you should have said to Martin McGuinness? <laughs> and it usually goes something like, there were no banks robbed and there were no guardies killed in anything I was involved in. Uh, and, and I can stand over anything I was involved in. But they weren't the thoughts going through my head. The thoughts going through my head is, I set out as I did all my life talking to young people in schools and I said, be the change, like McGandy said, be the change you want to see in the world. I, I believed in positive campaigning, uh, positive contribution, and I wouldn't grow one inch taller by criticising anybody else. Yeah, and I think all of us were sickened uh, and saddened and outraged by how, how Father Kevin Reynolds was treated. And I guess I got some understanding of how, just it, how difficult it was for him to get justice. I had no desire to complain to the BAI initially. I did feel a sense of injustice about the tweet uh, and how I'd been treated. And so I raised the matter with whom it needed to be raised with, and that was RTE. And so I wrote to them and explained my, my dissatisfaction. Uh, um, and they, I just was gobsmacked with their arrogance and with the almost hostility of their response. No, no, no contriteness, no apology, not even considering that they had done anything wrong. And so I sat down and I said, well, right, let's appeal this to RT again and let them have another look. I, I got the same reaction, uh, a hostile reaction. I then said, well, hold on, let's, let's get to the facts of this. And so I did what RT do all the time. I applied for Freedom of Information the VAC Act um, under the Freedom of Information, and I asked them for the information that they had about when the tw original Twitter bogus tweet came in, uh, and they refused to give me any information. And then I said, well, what more can I do? Well, let's write to Noel Curran, the Director General of RTE, seeking a meeting so I can talk to him about it, and he declined the meeting. And so at the end I said, I just have to take it to the BAI. But what I would say is that RTE, notwithstanding all of that, uh, have some serious questions to answer. And I do equate it very similar, and it's, been, it's a parallel that's been made clear to me many times um, about it with Father Reynolds' case and then my own case. Uh, the similarities and parallels between what happened in RTE and their response to Father Kevin Reynolds and to my uh, uh, unfairness, un unfair treatment, is like how the church itself as an institution reacted when it became aware of abuse and wrongdoing in the early 1990s. It went into defence mode and the institution shut down to defend itself. And what it did then with the church and what it did in Father Reynolds' case and what it did in mine is it simply went on to compound even further the original injustice and wrongdoing that had been done. And it would have been much easier to have just dealt with it much more fairly and much more swiftly. So me, I have seen the energy in the country and every single parish around this country in communities and youth groups and disability groups and small business owners. Ireland is great. If only we could change our national conversation to focus on opportunities, possibilities, and what we are good at. And that might sound like my presidential speech, but everything I've done in my life brought me to that point. I believe it now stronger than I believed it then, and I look forward to Ireland in the days ahead finding that newfound sense of confidence. And I hope that in some small way that I've given an example to all those out there who are thinking about stepping forward to do anything, to step forward and be prepared to get out there step out there and do your very best for yourself, your family, your community, your business, and above all, this great wee country we call Ireland. Thank you very much, Shane.